In this video, we are taking it back to, uh, I actually can't see without my glasses. In this video, we're gonna take it back to the fundamentals and use animated visualizations to deconstruct the Git working directory, staging area, repository, file states, and commits. These concepts are absolutely critical to a strong working knowledge of Git and building a mental model with the visualizations you're about to see might just lead to the aha moment you've been looking for. Just ask these folks. Also, there's a reason I'm wearing these sunglasses, but I'll explain at the end. For now, enjoy the video. When working on a software project, you're going to create a folder on your computer that holds your project files, code files, configuration files, image files, pretty much everything related to your project is gonna live in that folder. When you first tell Git to start tracking your project, what you're actually doing is adding special Git functionality to that particular folder. But on the surface, nothing really changes. You can create, edit, and delete files just like you normally would if you weren't using version control. So how does that all work? Well, now that we've told Git to start tracking our project, behind the scenes, Git has created that special Git database we learned about in module one. This is where Git stores all the information it needs to provide version control for your project. In actuality, this database is contained within a folder called .git. This .git folder is placed in the root of your project directory when you first initialize Git. And if we examine the contents of this folder, you'll find two distinct sections, the Git repository and the staging area. Let's start by looking at the Git repository. The repository is the database itself. In Git terms, it's sometimes called the object database. It holds all the information we learned about in module one, groups of backups, historical file versions, log messages, dates, and other metadata. We'll talk more about that later in this video. Next, we have the staging area. Remember how Git stores versions or snapshots of our files? Well, the staging area is the place where you bundle together those related file changes before snapshotting them and safely stowing them away in your Git repository. Think of the staging area as an intermediary between the working directory and the Git repository. Any file that needs to get backed up in the repository makes a pit stop in the staging area first. Now, again, if it doesn't make sense quite yet, don't worry, we're gonna get back to the staging area later in this video. Lastly, what about that folder that stores our project files? Well, in Git terms, we call this the working directory, and you can just think of it like another name for your project folder. Files within the working directory represent whatever code you're currently working on at the time. And because you're using Git, this folder and its contents are being version controlled and backed up inside the Git repository. File states. Now that we know a little bit about how Git actually works, we can start talking about the building blocks of our project, the files themselves. Anytime you create a new file or if you initialize Git in a directory where files already exist, you need to explicitly tell Git to start version controlling those files. So as you can see here, I have a project directory and I'll go ahead and convert it into a Git track directory. Now, if I pop open the Git repository itself, you can see that none of the files are being version controlled yet. We call these untracked files. Untracked means they're not backed up and they're not being version controlled by Git. So before we get started, we need to explicitly tell Git to start providing version control for those untracked files. After we do this, our files are now going to be backed up in that Git repository, and we'd say that our files are now being tracked. Then, of course, as we continue to work on our project and snapshot new versions of our files, our history grows. Great, so now we've told Git to track our files. There are three states that a tracked file within your Git repository can be at at any given time. Those three are committed, modified, and staged. Files reside in one of these three states and that state changes depending on what action is being taken on the file. Mostly these states exist to reflect how the file has changed since the last time it's been snapshotted. Let's break that down. We'll start with the committed state. Committed means the file is being tracked by Git and has been safely stored in our repository. In other words, they've been snapshotted at some point in the past and Git is providing version control functionality for that file. Remember tracked versus untracked files? Well, you could think of committed as a synonym for tracked. In the diagram on your screen, our committed files will have a little Git logo in the corner, but from now on, let's just signify it with an orange gradient to match the color of the Git logo instead. Now, next up is modified. We say a file is modified if it's been changed since the last time Git took a snapshot of it. Whether that means you've edited the file's contents or you've straight up deleted it, modified encompasses any file that is now different from the previous version that Git has stored in the repository. 
So if we pop up in our diagram, if I were to edit a file and then delete a file, both of those files are now considered in the modified state. Now, lastly, we have staged. Staged means the file has been marked for inclusion in your next snapshot. For example, if I were to move these modified files to the staging area, their state would change from modified to staged because I've told Git I intend to permanently save these file changes in my upcoming permanent snapshot. A good metaphor for this is your operating system's file explorer. When you want to perform an action on a group of files, say you'd like to delete or move them, you'd first select them in your file explorer. After they're all selected, you can then perform the action. Say you want to copy them to a different folder or something like that. Selecting the files doesn't actually do anything other than group them together for an upcoming operation. In Git terms, this is exactly what staging your files means. Staging simply selects them for a future operation. In Git's case, that future operation would be backing them up in the repository. And if we were to apply this file explorer example to some of the stuff we've already talked about in the lesson, let's say after I select some of the files, I'd like to copy them to a backup folder and save my progress. The Git repository is acting exactly like that backup folder. So in Git terms, selecting then copying those files to a backup folder is the equivalent of staging them, then committing them to the repository. At a high level, that's kind of what Git does behind the scenes to provide version control for your files. It just streamlines this backup process. Now that we know about file states, let's rewind and put it all together. I'll snapshot all of my staged changes, and now all those files will move back to the committed state. You'll notice that the deleted file is now gone from our working directory, but that its previous versions are still backed up in the repository in case I'd like to restore it in some point in the future. That's version control for you, and that's working as intended. At this point, you may be wondering, what's the point of the staging area and staging files? Well, let's talk about that for a second. Commits are the final bit of terminology to understand, and they tie together the staging area and the repository in a really interesting way that acts as kind of the building block of how Git works. I've been using the term snapshotted a lot to demonstrate these different concepts, but a more common term for snapshots is commits. Like we just learned, the staging area is the place where this process starts. Git keeps track of which files were committed at the same time, and it does this for the purpose of bundling them together in a container called a commit. Bundling groups of file changes allows you to easily track your project progression. In practice, commits often encompass a single feature or bug fix, and since any new piece of functionality or feature will often involve adding, creating, and deleting multiple files, it helps to bundle these together for documentation purposes. Commits also build on each other in a linear fashion. Subsequent commits are linked to the most recent commit to form a chain commonly called the Git tree. As a project progresses, that tree grows. When contributors branch off to work on other features, a commit chain grows off that main tree to form branches. Now, these commits and the trees that they form are the building blocks of Git history. We don't think of software development as a series of individual file changes. We often think of it as a series of features, and commits are an embodiment of that. As you progress further in your Git learning journey, you'll regularly hear the terminology we just discussed. And in the next three videos of this four-part series, we'll put all that theory into practice. Those videos are live right now, but before I talk about that, let me explain these sunglasses and put this all into perspective. These are a throwback to a previous video where I announced a secret project, LearnGit.io. Imagine the animated visualizations you're used to seeing on this channel, but far more in-depth, with an extensive lesson library, structured learning tracks, instant search with code snippets, and interactive written documentation. After nearly a year of work, LearnGit.io is live now, and this video and the next three in this series are part of the first module on Git fundamentals. If you hit the link in the description, you can actually grab the rest of this video series for free and learn more about LearnGit's other modules. Even if investing in LearnGit isn't in the cards for you right now, these free fundamental series lessons will give you a great jump start. Thanks again, and I appreciate all the support and kind comments. If you do, give LearnGit.io a try, reach out and let me know how I can improve. Thanks.